a 40 year old male complaining of about three months, two, three months of pain in the left shoulder. There was no injury. It's fairly constant pain uh, with both overhead and extension. Uh, he's tended to touch over the greater tuberosity and tender with motion. So we're just going to rule out any significant bursitis or interarticular pathology. Here we're going to go over anatomy, specifically of the biceps tendon sheath, uh, where this injection is. Here you can appreciate the biceps muscle, both the short and the long head. And this is the basically orientation of the procedure. This is an in-plane approach, long access view of the biceps tendon. Here the needle is entering the biceps sheath, and now we're starting the injection. You can appreciate the injectate contouring the surface of the biceps tendon here, and you can appreciate how the injection can travel approximately into the actual shoulder joint itself. Now we're looking at the glenohumeral ligaments. We can appreciate the anterior band or the inferior glenohumeral ligament as well as the middle glenohumeral ligament. The biceps muscle is made translucent. Here again, you can see the needle going into the bicipital tendon sheath, which is continuous with the joint. You can appreciate also here the coracohumeral ligament as well as the coracochromial ligament as well as the superior transverse scapular ligament. Here we're looking at the shoulder capsule from a superior perspective. You can appreciate the superior gonohumeral ligament as well as the rotator cuff cable, which is a thickening of the capsule, which goes from the greater to the lesser tuberosity and essentially helps buttress and support the capsule and the rotator cuff. Here we're going to look at the biceps tendon in short access. You can see a fairly sizable effusion around the biceps tendon. And this is really proximal, uh, just beyond the actual shoulder joint itself. Again, here you can see the fusion around the biceps tendon and some synovitis around that as well. Here's a good view of the pec major tendon. You can see how it basically goes over the biceps tendon and acts like a sleeve, stabilizing it over the anterior aspect of the humeral shaft. And here again, you can get a good view of the pec major tendon, fair amount of synovitis and fluid around the biceps tendon. Now we're going to look at the biceps tendon in a long axis view. So you can see the tendon here going basically down the humeral shaft. Again, you can appreciate synovitis and fluid around the biceps tendon. Here we're going distally. You can see how the biceps tendon feeds into the actual muscle. I'm talking about the long head specifically. You can also appreciate the pec major muscle and tendon as well. And in this view, we would be looking at pec major muscle and tendon in a short axis view. Here again is going proximal. We can see again fair amount of fluid. Now we're starting the procedure. This is a in-plane approach. We're going from caudal to cephalad, and we're looking at the biceps tendon essentially in a long axis view. Uh, the biceps tendon curves around, so maybe somewhat oblique. But here you can see the needle going right towards the biceps tendon, and here you can appreciate the tip of the needle within the sheath, and you can appreciate this bright hyperechoic signal around the biceps tendon, which is probably air from the injectate and perhaps the needle shaft contouring the biceps tendon. And here you can see the um, injectate and air within the injectate contouring the biceps tendon nicely. And that confirms that you're in the correct location. And now we're pulling out. You can appreciate how the needle is following the course of the biceps tendon as it curves around towards the glenoid. And this is after the procedure, just scrolling over the region of the injection. You can appreciate how the injectate essentially circumferentially contours around the biceps tendon, confirming that we were in the bicipital sheath.